All right, we're turning it over to Coach Chizik for a brief comment, and we'll open up some questions. Coach? Well, I, uh, I think that everybody knows and understands this has been an incredibly uh, difficult uh, 72 hours uh, for a lot of people, uh, starting with uh, you know, six victims and their family and friends. And uh, I want everybody to be mindful that there were six victims and uh, a lot of family and friends that uh, have had an incredibly difficult 72 hours. The whole Auburn community, uh, the whole Auburn family is devastated. Uh, in the passing of three young men, uh, we're, just, we're, we're devastated that uh, two of the young men, uh, we obviously know very well, and Darius Phillips and Ed Christian. And um, it's just hard to put into words the difficulty that a lot of people uh, are facing right now. It's, uh, you know, it's hard to stand up here and really, you know, figure out and try to navigate, you know, these uncharted waters for, <clears throat> for all of us. And, uh, you know, I want to say that, uh, you know, our thoughts and prayers and, uh, you know, everything that, uh, that we can do for the, for the victims' families is, is our number one priority right now. And, uh, you know, on the night of the uh, incident, there, was, there were so many people that, uh, that I appreciate. That did a that did a, a really nice job of communicating with us and trying to keep us, you know, up to speed with what was going on. I, I want to say that, uh, you know, our our law enforcement agency here, the Auburn Police Department, Tommy Dawson and uh, his group, uh, did a great job in, in communicating with us uh, as quick as possible. <coughs> I appreciate that. Uh, you know, I really appreciate the media, you guys, and, and how respectful you've been in terms of the respecting the privacy of the victims and respecting the privacy of our football team, to be quite honest. Um, and I really, uh, I would really, you know, appreciate if you continue to be respectful of that. And uh, again, I've got a, I got a team of 120 some odd players right now that are really just trying to, to navigate uh, what is a lot of questions that aren't answered. Um, we're trying to do that as a coaching staff, and I think the entire Auburn community is trying to do the same thing. And uh, with respect to an uh, ongoing investigation, obviously, you know, we can't go into a lot of details of really anything. But I think it's pretty obvious, you know, that uh, you know, we've, got, uh, we've got a road ahead of us right now, and it's a long road of grieving for a lot of different people, and we're all trying to figure out exactly, you know, how to do that. And everybody's got their own way of doing it. And uh, so right now, this is really a day-by-day -day process for the athletic department. Uh, I think it's a day-by-day -day process for uh, friends and family of the victims. And uh, like I said, our, our, our heart and our prayers go out to uh, those families. And uh, so uh, our number one goal, again, is to support those families, uh, to support the friends of those families, to do whatever we can as an athletic department, uh, to reach out and help. And uh, for me and my football team, you know, my number one goal is to try to provide some type of uh, <clears throat> some type of aid and counseling and, and things of that nature for 18 to 22 year olds, uh, many who haven't experienced anything like this, and try to find them you know, a way to, uh, to navigate this world. And that's hard enough for, for grown adults that are you know, 40 and 50 and 60 years old. <clears throat> and uh, you know, we've got a whole team trying to figure this out. So you know, that's, 
that's another top priority for us is, is trying to get our guys some help. And uh, today, uh, you know, we, we talked to a couple of players about coming in here and seeing if they felt comfortable and talking to the media for a brief period of time and it just uh, it wasn't the right time. And uh, it's pretty obvious that, you know, the several young men that we asked, they're not ready to do this. I'm not ready to do this. That, that's part of my job. So um, that's kind of where we're at. And, uh, you know, again, it's just uh, it's a tough period of time with uh, not a lot of answers right now to anything. Uh, but we're going to continue day by day to do the things that we can to nav navigate uh, this world. And, uh, but again, it's a day by day process. So uh, with that, uh, you know, I'm going to open this up to questions. When did you first hear about the news, uh, either Saturday night or Sunday morning, and, and uh, what was your reaction? What did you do? Well, uh, I can't go into a lot of the details. You know, uh, like I said, the Auburn law enforcement, um, starting with Chief Tommy Dawson, did a fantastic job of communicating with me uh, that night. And again, I can't go into a lot of the details, but I'm very appreciative of the way that unfolded. We were, we were on top of it from the beginning, and the communication was, was flawless in terms of, you know, us staying abreast of everything that was happening. And uh, as you can imagine, the emotion is what any of you would feel in here. You know, it's disbelief, it's outrage, it's devastation. <clears throat> you know, I, it's, it's really hard to express exactly all the emotions that go through you when you hear something that is so outrageous that it's just very difficult to believe. But, <clears throat> you know, again, uh, you know, I thought the communication process with the law enforcement here at, at Auburn was, uh, was very good, very professional. Gene, obviously, in this time of age with Twitter and social media, I'm sure stuff started getting out. How did you, when did you first contact the players or try to get them together to explain what, what happened? And, and when you finally did, what did you say? Well, you know, this was, uh, you know, this was a get together that, uh, you know, it was, it was college students at a gathering. And, you know, uh, they, were, they were gathering together to watch the NBA playoffs. And so it wasn't like it happened at 2.30 you know, in the morning, and you know, it had happened almost 10 o'clock at night. So obviously, you know, there was a lot of people awake and a lot of people around. And, and so obviously, uh, you know, with social media right now, things got out quick. But, you know, we did what we thought uh, in a timely fashion was the best way to communicate with our players. And again, without going into a lot of detail, uh, at that moment, you know, my first concern was to making sure that, you know, everybody on our football team along with anybody else that was anywhere near the incident, was safe. And so, uh, you know, obviously at that time, you know, it's hard to gather up you know, a whole team full of guys. You don't know who's out of town, who's in town. You know, your first thought is protect your players and protect anybody that's even close to the incident. So uh, without going into the details of how we did that, that was our first plan of action, uh, trying to get everybody into a good place. and. Uh, you know, so that's, that's what we did. But we, we, we knew about it shortly after the incident occurred. And again, that was uh, uh, good communication. And what was your message when you, when you finally met with them? Basically that, you know, everybody needs to get back to wherever, you know, get back to your dorm, get back to your apartments, get back to, you know, we, we need, everybody needs to get, get home. When you were able to meet with your players, can you give us a sense of just how they looked to you, how they were doing? with this obviously is so fresh? We weren't able to have a, a meeting till the next day. Mm -hmm. uh, so we had a team meeting the next day and it was, it was a very difficult meeting. And uh, you know, there was a lot of emotions that spilled out from a lot of different people. We let some of our guys talk, you know. I tried to explain to them that this is a grieving process and there's no right and there's no wrong, that everybody's gonna feel the way they are and there's no guilt in that one way or the other. There's going to be a lot of tears. There's going to be a lot of solemn faces. There's going to be a lot of I don't know how to act in this moment. And all of that is right. There's nothing that's wrong with that. We tried to impart to them that we're going to do everything we can as an athletic department to get them help, to get them counseling, to get them whatever they need. Uh, but there was a lot of devastation in the room. And it was, it was a pretty lengthy team meeting. 
and uh, a lot of emotions in there, and uh, from coaches and players, <clears throat> and uh, you know it was a very very difficult, very difficult uh, first meeting after the incident. So uh, again, we gave the players a chance to say what they thought and felt, and all that was very fair, and uh, they needed to do that. We got up and expressed you know, the way we felt as coaches, and uh, you know, at the end it was a good, it was a good meeting simply because we needed to all be on the same page with where we were at and where and how we felt, and that no matter how you felt, that was okay. And uh, but the, the long and short of the message of the meeting was that um, we're going to make sure that we take this day by day, and that. We're going to try to help any way we can, be mindful that there were six victims, and even though three of them were either past or, or present football players, there's still six victims here. And this was, a, you know, this was something where we needed to reach out to, you know, to a lot of people. And so uh, I think you know, I understood that. Gene, how is Eric Mack doing physically and mentally? He's, uh, you know, he's, he's expected to... Uh, make a full recovery. He's up walking around. Uh, his mother is here in town. And uh, for the circumstances, uh, you know, uh, both of them are in, a, in, a, in an okay place. Uh, I think he feels very blessed that, you know, he was, you know, able to walk away from it. And, uh, but again, you know, we're expecting for him to have a full recovery. And, um, uh, you know, that's, with what happens after this in terms of football and all that, it's, it's neither here nor there with that. It's, uh, uh, it's just a, about the fact that the young man is going to be okay. It says Monte Leonard is listening to you. Do you have anything you'd like to say to him to ask him to turn himself in? Pardon me? Do you have anything you'd like to say to the suspect to get him to turn himself in? No, I don't. Dude, how do you, that Auburn or any other college they have, what, what steps do you take to, to to protect guys from one crazy person with one guy? Is, is, there, is there really anything you can do? You know, Philip, we, we, we try to educate our guys on, you know, a lot of things. I mean, you know, this is one of the safest college communities in the country. I mean, you know, you know, U.S. News and World Report comes out with something that talks about this is one of the top ten places to live in the United States a couple of years ago. I mean, you know, these these things, it's, a, it's an isolated incident that makes no sense. And we try to educate our guys daily, no different than I would do with my own children, you know, in looking for the signs of things that may become dangerous or uh, may become, you know, a situation where you need to leave now and um, you know I, that's what we talk about all the time and again this was uh, some college students gathered to watch an NBA playoff game I mean you should be able to go out there and watch a game and be able to uh, you know be able to be safe doing it in this particular instance it was not I don't know that there's any magical teaching moment for somebody to recognize when, you know, somebody's going to, you know, do, do what they did, do what he did, but um, it's just very, uh, it's very hurtful. Any other questions? Yeah, yeah, I mean, are you concerned at all that some of the players who were there and saw some of the really bad things happening wouldn't be able to get straight in time for football season or longer than that? Well, I'm going to break that question down into two parts. I'm not worried about football season. Okay? I don't care about football season. This is not about football season. This meeting is about young guys that are trying to get past a very tragic event. So, it's, to me, it's neither here nor there whether it's football season or next football season or 18 months from now. I want to get these guys healthy as fast as I can get them healthy. So there's no timeline on that. And as I said earlier, my, I've got one goal. My one goal 
is to make sure that we provide everything we can for anybody that was affected, whether they were there or they were not there, whether they were their best friend or they were kind of their friend, or they were best friends with the family or not. My number one goal is to make sure that these guys get the help they need to get over this at whatever point the grieving process kicks in and, and, and you know, they find a way to get through this. So there's no timeline on it, there's no time limit. Don't care about football season. It's the last thing on my mind. Um, again, I've got, I've got a whole football team. Uh, I've got six victims and their families and a whole football team that, uh, that I'm concerned about right now. Coach, do you say that you guys are Absolutely. Uh, we had them up and available on Sunday uh, at our team meeting, and uh, they've absolutely been using them. Uh, all the services that we're providing, they've been using them. They're going to continue to use them as long as they need to, uh, again, to, uh, to come to some type of better place. Coach, have you been in con how, how much contact have you had with the various family uh, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but a lot. Uh, it's been a great communication process in terms of myself, their families, the athletic department, their families. Again, when I say that our number one goal is to try to uh, do whatever we can for the victims and their families, uh, that's what we mean. So there's been great communication uh, with, with you know, both Darius' family and his family. Can we all, will y'all go to the two services as a team? Well, we're going to definitely, as an athletic department, provide uh, transportation for everybody, uh, not just football team-wise, but everybody in our athletic department uh, that, uh, that wants to attend the services. Uh, we're going to provide that opportunity for everybody, yes. Gene, you spent a lot of time with, with those two players. Can you tell us about them, something that you might not know just by seeing them play on the field about, about those guys? You know, I, you know, the, these are two fine young men, two good young men. And, you know, they had a whole life ahead of them. And, um, you know, it, it wasn't about whether they were a good player or a bad player, or they got hurt or they didn't get hurt or any of that stuff. They were just two great young men different than any other 20 or 21 year old out there and um, so uh, it was certainly uh, it was a pleasure for me to be able to recruit them and it was a pleasure for me to be around uh, the two guys that like I said were fine young men. Have you seen or heard any uh, things from the university about them? Those um, I've got a whole list of people and things that have called and things of that nature that I have not uh, been able to get back to. Uh, and that certainly could have happened, but uh, you know, right now, I, you know, I'm, there's, there's a bunch of people that have reached out and they've been fantastic. But as you can imagine, our plate is full right now, so I don't know whether that's occurred or not. But time for one more. Coach, you mentioned you communicated with both families. Were you the one that had to call them initially on Saturday night? Uh, I, I really don't want to go into the details of, of how that unfolded, Brian, but I was definitely in communication um, with uh, some family Saturday night. All right. Thank you.